is going to be a quick overview of uh, some software I wrote. It's template uh, using uh, Phaser 2D, which is a, uh, a library used for creating 2D games in HTML5 uh, that uses WebGL and also uh, you know web acceleration. And it uses the Canvas as well as a fallback feature. Um, it's very easy to use. I do recommend you look at some basic code before um, you know, diving into a larger project because you can write a simple little game with just a little bit of code and one line. But I created this template basically to allow you to have, you know, like a load screen, a, a main menu, an info menu, and links to different scenes or levels. Uh, and it's kind of just, it's just a, basically a game I wrote that has no goal to it. Um, that you can just you know use to start off your projects once you get into you know a little larger projects. So if you go to uh, GitHub.com, my username is metalx1000. So if you go to GitHub.com metalx1000, click on repositories and find the one that says um, Phaser Game Template. You can search through here. I've got a lot of code up on uh, on GitHub that you can go through. We go in here. And there's a list of all the code you can look at. You can obviously download it in a zip file or use Git to download it. Um, so there's the code. We're going to go more into that in the next video, actually looking over the code. But this is just an overview of what the game template looks like. And I do have it running live on my web server. My web server checks for updates on GitHub every hour, so any changes I make will automatically be updated to my website, so you can get the latest, try out the latest version just by clicking on the link down here in the README file, which is filmsbychris.com forward slash scripts phaser game template, capital P, capital G, capital T, but you can just click on the link there. And there you go. You uh, may hear some music playing. I do have a mute button for the music. When you do click on it, I have it set to go straight to full screen when you click on it. By default, I have it set in vertical, vertical mode. Um, but as far as you know, changing that to, to landscape mode, uh, I'll show you more in the next video when we look at the code. But it's basically comment, commenting out one line and uncommenting another line, and you'll be in landscape mode. But once you click or on a tablet or phone touch the game, it goes full screen. As I said, there's a mute, unmute button for the music. Um, I have some default music and default, default text here, which are all PNGs, which you can go ahead and change. The animations are, is in the code, so once you change the PNG in the files, there you go, you're good to go there. So it says, you know, my fun games, the default title, you have a play and an info button, and a little bit of a, you know, uh, whatever you want on the bottom logo here. I gave a little shout out to the guy who did the music for this. Uh, if we click play, you know, I made this simple little kind of like character type select screen. You're not actually selecting a character, but when you click them, they kind of move to the side. One thing I need to work on here is if you double click, it kind of starts bringing out. So if you just keep on clicking, it starts shooting out a bunch of guys and they get overlapped like that. A little glitch, but again, that's just it's just you know a template. You're going to overwrite a lot of this. Click me will bring you into the game. And I just made a very basic level with a repeating texture down here at the bottom, an exit button, a title. And these characters I put in here, when you move the mouse over them or on a tablet, touch them with your finger or on a phone, touch them with your finger, they make a little noise and bounce up. Every so often, a new one will drop in from one side of the screen, and that's it. So I just wanted to give you basics here. You have, you know, collision with the mouse cursor, collision with the ground. You have, you know, physics with the gravity. Stuff that you're going to have in most games. You have directionals, and each character moves at their own speed, which changes every time they collide with the edge of the level. So this character might be walking slow now, and he might speed up or slow down more when he touches the other side there. You can see this guy right here is running really fast. So really no goal to it. They'll just keep coming, and you click on them, and they bounce up. You know, it's just fun to play with. But I just wanted to throw something together that has a lot of the basic things you'll be using in a game. There, there would be music playing if I didn't mute it on the home screen. And again, physics, collision, different types of collision, directional change, character animation, all stuff you need in a basic game. Um, so next we'll hit exit. You have a little exit screen here. You can click here to start over. And you're back at the main menu. I can unmute the music here. 
muted again, uh, and I can click info. These guys just falling. There's some gravity here, but I don't have any collision detection on the main menu. Just once you go into the play. Uh, but if we click info, it brings up a basic info box. And this is all uh, inside a very simple little text file, so you can easily edit the text file to edit the info of the game. And you can click on that. Like uh, by default, I have it. If you click on the license, it brings you to the license. Um, if you click on, you know, the any of them, they all have links. And that's all in a very basic little text file you can edit. Again, we'll look at more in the next video. So that's it. It's, you know, again, if I refresh, it's already loaded so that you didn't see the load screen. There is a load screen. Um, you have your main menu, kind of like an entry level uh, here. You have your main game, an exit screen, and an info box. So, again, template with all the basics you need to get your game going. Again, you know, if you're just starting out with Phaser, I suggest just making a one-page game. But as your game gets larger, uh, you'll definitely want a load screen, which I have incorporated here. And this is something that you know I'm going to continue to add to. But you can definitely get the latest code over at GitHub. There should be a link in the description. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about this. I just wanted to show you it before we get into the code. So hopefully there's an annotation on the screen either to the next video or the full playlist. If you're not watching the playlist already, the next video we'll go over and just skim over and look at some of the code and, and play around with it. Um, and I do want to mention if you're unfamiliar with HTML5 game development, don't think that you need to have internet access every time you want to play this game. Uh, you can set games very easily by creating a manifest file. Um, that once the game loads on someone's tablet or phone or computer, if there's no internet connection, um, or even if there's the manifest file doesn't change, the game just loads locally. The only time it would reload is if you change stuff on the web server. So you don't need an internet connection after the game's loaded. You can close the browser. As long as you don't clear out your cache, the game will run on, on your computer locally without any internet connection. So don't be concerned about the fact that it's an HTML5 game because HTML5 is a local, you know, it runs on your side. JavaScript is the main code that runs on the client side. Uh, that's, that's one fear. People think you need a web server to, to run this stuff. Uh, and although that's the easiest way to distribute it, you don't, another nice thing about this is you don't have to package it up. You don't have to worry about different, um, operating systems, you know, you, you just give someone a link, they load it up, they can create a shortcut on a desktop. You could package it up uh, for Android devices or desktop devices of different operating systems, but it's just so much easier to give someone a link. And again, once it's loaded, they can shut off their internet access, they can turn off their machine, turn it back on when they go back there. If you haven't changed your manifest file, if you've created a manifest file, if you haven't changed it, uh, it will load locally without the network and also makes it easy to do updates because you can change stuff on your web server and it will automatically change it the next time the person loads up the game. So keep that stuff in mind. Again, this is a, a template. There should be a link in the description, but if you go to github.com forward slash mailx1000, search through my repositories for phaser game template uh, and just download the code and have fun. Again, next video, we'll look at the code. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.